So the big question is this, how do most agents who struggle to get the information that most successful agents hoard to themselves grow and prosper without this information? That's the big question and this video cast is the answer. Welcome to Real Estate Rockstars. I'm your host, Pat Hyben. Okay, Rockstar Nation, great. I have a super guest coming from Westchester. You probably never heard of it. Pennsylvania, I know you've heard of that, or hopefully you've heard of it. Uh, Westchester, Pennsylvania, uh, who is knocking things dead, and several people said I need to get her on the show, so I got her. So uh, without further ado, Lindsay, and by the way, Lindsay is L-I-N-Z-E-E, -E, new way of spelling that, um, Ciprani is on uh, the show. Uh, Lindsay, welcome to Real Estate Rockstars. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Hey, Lindsay, why don't you uh, give everybody a little rundown on who you are so they can get to know you better? Yeah. So I am, I've been an agent for 10 years, um, hung my license under Keller Williams. I started out as somebody who was helping to manage um, and build somebody's team and went out on my own. And in the process of doing that, um, a couple of people tried to recruit me so I could run their team. And instead I, I started a consulting company called Soprani Consulting by accident is what I always tell people. And, uh, here I am with two businesses and, um, and they're awesome. So we love what we do. All things real estate. You know, everything in life is accidental, right? It's like, uh, I just like to say the universe brought you that company, right? And it just, yeah. it just happened. I mean, I got into real estate this, you know, I got into real estate. It wasn't, forceful by any means it just happened you know yeah uh, and uh and everything that happened to me just you know just hap stuff just happened so well, let's talk about this so you you know you've ran it you started out like as an admin right running a team yes right? so yeah and it was a little tell me about that yeah it was a little more than an admin right so we had a transaction coordinator in place we had a marketing person in place so two admin underneath me and um, the agent that brought me in named Matt Fedick, uh, really needed somebody to start to, you know, help manage them and manage everybody else. Um, we needed to get him just into sales and starting to build the business. So that was my 20% was to start to do that. Okay. And then how long did you do that for? I did that for four years. Um, we built together and man, did we went through all kinds of crazy stuff and, you know, we got to a point actually within my first couple of months, I had that transaction coordinator and that marketing person and they both went away from me. So I became all of those things, but I really do <laughs> believe that's what kind of um, made me who I am. You know, right. I had a blessing in disguise, right? Absolutely. Yeah. I look back on that and I think now I'm like, man, I'm glad that I had that happen. I'm glad that we were in a million different, you know, systems and phone systems. Like we tried it all. Wow. Okay. So now you said, Hey, you know, I'm going to do this. If Matt can do it, I can do it. And, mm -hmm. and I'm going to create my own team. And, and you started your own team. How long ago was that? Yeah. So three years ago, um, I went out on my own and was a solo agent. And, uh, so, you know, attempted to do that. And, and like I said, I, you know, I actually did pretty well. Um, I closed 16 deals in my first year while starting that uh, consulting company kind of on the side because I still, I loved the teams so much that it was killing me not being a part of a business and, and kind of, you know, helping people grow businesses. So did both of those things. And uh, before I knew it, Soprani Consulting started to bring in more than even my real estate. Oh, wow. So well, I want to talk about both of those today. Yeah. But first of all, let's talk on the real estate side. Um, you know, as you know, one of our, uh, uh, questions is what was your, uh, ECI, your ego commission income in the last 12 months? What would you say that is Lindsay? Yeah. Ego. So probably 350. Okay. And then what was your net profit on that? Was 250. That's not bad. So you spent a hundred grand on overhead. Yes. And how many houses is that? That is what we just do. I, gosh, I think we're at 90 right now. Um, but we're, we're close to 100. We'll be close to 100 by the time we're done here. And then, so 100 houses a year. And 
Um, is it just you doing all these? You have a team or what are you in production? Tell me how, how you got this set up. So that's the beautiful thing. Um, I told you that I went out on my own three years ago. I actually partnered with somebody for a little while because Soprani had taken off. And um, that partnership, he got an, the person I partnered with got an amazing opportunity elsewhere. And so we were all left with, do we, do we keep a team? Do we not have a team? What do we do? And so here I am. Um, this is our first full year as a real estate team. Um, we had to start over everything from scratch because everything was in his name. And so really, um, yeah. So we, here we are at almost 100 transactions closed in our first year. You still use his name? Nope. We changed the name. We relaunched everything, every process. Did, you, did you keep his uh, database? We didn't. He took that database to okay. his new place. So basically, <laughs> you know, he gave you the confidence to start a team and, and start in the business. And, and uh, then you're like, okay, fine. We don't need you anyways. We'll, we'll figure it out. <laughs> you didn't want to go with him, huh? Uh, well, you know what? It wasn't on the table at the moment. Um, it probably would be now, but yeah, it wasn't on the table to do that. And so, and, and a lot of us really liked where we were. We liked Keller Williams and, and that was not where he was staying. So we so made it basically you split up and yeah. you went to a different brokerage and you said, I'm going to stay here. I'm going to keep running it. And, and now you're doing that now. Now, are you in production? I mean, you've got to have I know you have some leverage, but at the same time to, you know, only have a hundred thousand in expenses, you're probably not giving that much of it away. So how do you have it set up? Yeah. So we launched a team from the, um, you know, from the very beginning here. So I actually put a lot of money into it this year too. Um, and I am not in production. So I have a lead listing specialist. I have a listing manager. I have an ISA. Um, we have a couple, we have three buyer's agents who are awesome. And we've got another admin. So I uh, went straight to seventh level without doing that. But a lot of that has to do with processes and procedures that I've been putting in place for years. So, wow. Okay. And um, and then and then you're now your your I don't want to say your one thing or your main focus is um, is this consulting firm. And this consulting firm pays you more than the real estate. Uh, sales and what are you doing with that? Yeah, so we we have uh, we're actually growing that pretty fat quickly now. We have about six people on that team as well. Jeez. Yeah, and uh, and that is that's doubled since last year. Which what is, do they do? So they hire um, everything in real estate, and then they we stay on and train. Um, but we put the processes in, in systems. For teams, like if I need a listing coordinator, I call you and you find me a listing coordinator in West, would it, would Baltimore, Maryland, or, or Folly Beach, South Carolina. Um, if I need a, a, an office manager for an office of 50 agents, you can find that person. If I need a runner, you can find it. Is that, is that what happens? Yeah, absolutely. Yep. We, uh, we take you through that process and, and we bring the agent in when we believe they need to be involved. And that's only to meet the people um, in person. And we do that with about four to six individuals only. And um, they dwindle it down to three and then two and then they hire. And so we're along that ride the whole time. You're kind of like a headhunter for real estate teams and real estate brokerages. And what, what do you charge for that? Yeah, so we are charging anything with a salary right now. We're charging twenty five hundred. Anything that is um, it, so anything that's a real estate agent or somebody who you know a productivity coach or something like that, where it is all commission based, we're charging thirty five hundred. Wow, um, uh, yeah, that's great. Uh, that th those are both bargain prices. And I, guys, I'm going to put all of Lindsay's information, by the way. Uh, on hybendigital.com backslash. And since she spells her name different than most Lindsay's, I'm going to just put hybendigital.com backslash L I N Z double E. It's like L I N Z double E. That's it. Hybendigital.com backslash Lindsay. So um, if you're curious about this, um, okay, so let's get back into the nitty gritty of your real estate sales. Um, where, where are all your leads coming from that you could sell a hundred houses? Yeah, so we um, so we have a very great culture with um, you know calling calling expireds and for sale by owners and um, okay, can you explain what does that mean? We have a great culture for calling. Cultural. For I mean, anybody could say that, but what does yeah, it mean? Yeah, yeah. 
we're, my, my people are calling all day long. Um, so we start out with, you know, the hope is to call for two hours in the morning. Um, but then most of the, my team, if they don't have anything else going on at the moment, they're, they're calling all day um, and they enjoy it. So how, how do you find these people that are calling, you know, like yeah. this all day out of the blue? I think you don't find them out of blue. I think they're special. <laughs> um, but it is somebody who is just hungry and, and is looking for any way to, um, you know, make, I mean, they want to make the most that they can. Right. And so calling doesn't phase them. They're, it's a special personality as well. I mean, for sure for somebody, especially the ISA role for somebody to be calling all day and that's their job, you know, they have to be kind of a special person. So what do you think about the word toolbox? What is a toolbox? A toolbox is a box full of tools that you use to build something great. At Real Estate Rockstars, we've created our own free toolbox. So everybody that comes on the show as a guest brings a tool with them and we plow them all into this toolbox and we give it away for our viewing audience to basically use as they wish. Everything we put in there is an actionable item that can be downloaded, can be printed, can be used immediately. And we got things like scripts and dialogues, checklists for teams, checklists to keep agents accountable, referral forms that are filled out at settlement to get referrals by your buyers and sellers. Everything you could think of that you could use on a regular basis about real estate is included in this toolbox and it's helping agents worldwide sell more houses and make their jobs a lot easier and processes much more efficient and the thing is it's absolutely free all you got to do is go to hybendigital.com backslash toolbox or text the word toolbox to 444-999 that's toolbox 444-999 do it now well, since, you know, you're an expert, right, in your own field of building a team in three years, right, uh, to this massive thing you got going now almost, which sounds to me like a huge team for only 100 units. I mean, really, it sounds like you've built that up to do 250, 300 next year because I would say you're overstaffed now, right, for yeah, only 100 absolutely. units. I mean, you're at like one unit a month per agent or something now. Yeah, we're absolutely overstaffed. Uh, we have two brand new agents that are buyer's agents that um, it takes them a little while to get into production. We had, when we started this and we left a team and, and people broke up, we had um, an extra ISA in there that um, we ended up parting ways with. And so we were actually a lot bigger and, and now we've only got about half of them. Um, however, we've kind of kept it where we are. And, and like I said, you know, the the team actually hasn't made me as much money as I would love it to make um, because we pumped a little bit more money into it. Whereas Soprani has done a little bit more for me. Okay. Well, so, so let's say you're looking yep. for someone else or you're looking for yourself for an agent. What advice can you give to the people out there listening on how to find them and what to look for? So for me, if you're looking for an agent, um, you know, the biggest thing for that we do that I think a lot of people don't do um, is we lead gen for agents, right? So I load lists into the, our dialer and we just call right through that list and we leave voicemails and we put them on drips and, you know, we actually pursue other people in the business. Now what do you say? Let's say you're calling me. I'm an agent. I'm, I'm a year in the business. <laughs> I eight houses last year. Right. Uh, let's, let's, can we role play this right now? Absolutely. absolutely. Okay. So uh, I pick up the phone. Hello. Hello. It's Lindsay Soprani from Soprani Consulting. And I am calling on behalf of Lindsay Soprani. I don't know. We would say whoever, right? Whoever, I'm calling on behalf of Pat, Pat Hyden. And we're looking for um, somebody who's looking for a new opportunity. Do you have any interest in chatting with us about an opportunity that we might have? Well, what do you mean by opportunity, Lindsay? What are, you, what are you talking about? Yeah, so specifically, I'm actually looking for a buyer's agent at the moment. And this person would love to specialize in the buyer side of the business. So maybe you, or if not you, somebody that you know of um, doesn't love the listing side of the business. 
we are looking for that person who, who really wants to specialize with buyers. Hmm. And, um, you know, what does it pay? Well, you know, there's a split because you would be joining a team and we could sit down and really talk about that. But you have to understand that, you know, it's going to be all about what you bring in. And so we can discuss different splits and, and where there is a win-win um, as soon as we sit down. But I think it would be beneficial for you if you have any interest at all in working with just buyers. It'd be beneficial for us to sit down and have that conversation and, and at least you could see what the opportunity is. Okay, so let me just end, end the conversation there. So, so. First of all, why why are you why are you why are you saying just buyers? I mean, some people would say, you know, oh, you're going to turn them off, you know. Yeah. But I think there's strategically you're doing that on purpose, right? You're trying to to cure some pain there, right? Like, like yeah, listings are a bad thing or a tough. Thing yeah, and, what, and right? you know what? And so really, we didn't talk about which way we we're going to go with that. Yeah. Um, yeah, okay. yeah. So you know, I just I chose to go with the buyer side, and really, there are people out there that don't love the listing side of the business. Most um, agents are afraid mm -hmm. of listings. So, to listings equal pain to them. Yeah, they do. You have one product like to sell, a right? Ghost. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and we and we talk about that with some people. You know, sometimes they'll be like, "Oh, you know, I, you know, yeah, I actually do a lot more buyers," and I'm like, "Hey, listen, this this." amazing agent has a ton of buyers that he's not even touching right now. He's not even talking to the leads. He's passing them off to somebody else. You can have an opportunity to work with all of those people and just do what you really love and open doors and, and show homes and negotiate. Wouldn't you love that? And they're like, well, but I'd have to do double, right? So then I'll get, I'm like, that's not necessarily true. Let's build a business under somebody else's business, right? You can have a showing agent. You can have all kinds of things that we can talk about then. And obviously an, a good admin staff is, you know, going to be beneficial to that person too. Wow. Amazing. Okay. And let's say, let's say there's a guy listening now and, uh, or a girl listening that owns a company of 50 agents and, uh, their office manager just quit. Right. And you, they want to call out, uh, and try to find someone that can manage agents. Mm -hmm. What script would you recommend for them? Can we role play that? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so say I'm a who. First of all, who would you call, right? Who do you? Yeah, call? you know, Hello, Mississippi. Uh, do you just call agents or what? It's actually a funny thing. So in that case, we can put you know a job out because normally it's going to come with a salary. We can put okay. that out there into the where, world. Where do you put it? And the, obtain the recruiter where? Yeah, we do. So we actually use two systems. So we use um, ZipRecruiter and Wise Hire. And those kick it out to a ton of different places. And then we pay for an ad on um, Craigslist as well as Facebook and then LinkedIn. So we, we are casting a very wide what net. What does it say? Yeah. It is going to say um, something to the effect of, you know, have you ever managed people before? And, and I can actually give you guys this if you want to post it. But, you know, have you ever great. managed? Thank you. Yeah. Um, have you ever managed people before? Do you love running a sales team? You know, do you have experience in um, putting systems and processes in place? Do you love checklists? Like, you know, a lot of those things. And then we'll, we'll really detail exactly what it is. And then we'll make them, you know, we'll give them directions like, hey, you know, send us your disk. So we do a lot of stuff with the disk um, when we're pre-screening because we believe that's a really good assessment to use in order yeah, to a quick one. And so what mm -hmm. for an office manager, yep. what this profile do you look for? Well, it depends. I'm um, actually, there's a number of different um, disc profiles that I'll look at for that. And it really is very dependent on who I've got in the lead agent role. Um, because that person does have to come alongside of them in some capacity. Well, let's say it's, let's say I own a brokerage, uh, you know, uh, you know, hound dog real estate and, and I have 50 agents, I'm a broker. Yeah. And I want someone to manage them. Yeah. Do I get, I, I, I would think I'd want like an ID. And so for me, I, you know, an SC can still do a really good job of that. They're that silent D we always talk about. Um, for me, if I could find a DC, I'd be really happy because then they'd be able to put the processes and procedures in place and really start to, you know, put those things in place that, you know, help us manage. Yeah. That's probably a good one. Yeah. I talked to a guy on the show recently and he was, uh, he was a clearly a DC and he, yeah, was, was doing really well as an office manager of, 
uh, I forget what company he was with, but, but anyway, so yeah, uh, hard to find that personality, definitely hard to find, but I can understand why you'd want that. Okay. And then let's say I'm hiring for, um, uh, you know, I'm just recruiting agents. What do you look for, for buyer agents? Yeah, you're, I mean, if I can find an ID in that situation, I'm, I'm really happy. And IS is going to be great as well. Um, you know, if you've got a DI that'll do the buyer side and actually likes it, that's even better. But so that's what you want for the listings probably is the DI, right? It is. And that's specifically what we look for. But yeah, I mean, more than anything else, you know, talent trumps disc all day long. And so if you can find somebody Trump's disc all day long. <laughs> yeah. And you know, I, I just send people to Anthony Robbins disc. I say Google Anthony Robbins disc and go and send and send it to me after you do it. Is that what you do? Or do you send them somewhere else? We use that. We use people keys as well. Sometimes um, people, people keys is keys. It's really cool. Yeah. They have a good disc. It gives you three different it's still um, free. It's not that one you have to pay um, for. Yeah, Anthony Robbins is free and they, yeah. anybody can, any idiot can find it and take it and then, and, and then send you the PDF of the results. And it's like, well, you know, what's you know, what's awesome about that one is that values index. Have you ever seen the second report that yeah, comes? Yeah, yeah. It, so you could have an SC with a high economic scale there. Who's like really driven by money and mm. they perform really well. So I actually like that second report on there a lot. I'll have to start paying attention to that economic yeah scale there yes it's blue it's yep <laughs> wow. yeah, yeah it's fascinating. a good one fascinating okay so we're like well, let, let, let's talk a little bit about the team there i know you've gotten some press recently a lot of people are talking about how you have things structured like a lot of people talk about things in real estate like you got to mail a certain amount of things every month or every year you've got to do a certain amount of things but you actually put these things in place and keep your, your team highly accountable to these. Give me, give me some examples of what we're talking about and, um, and, and, and how you're implementing these and what they are. Yeah. Well, so for me, systems are really important. Um, so finding a really great system that you can be on that helps hold you accountable is, I mean, that's so what, what do you guys use? Yeah, we're on seize the market. Um, seize the market. What is seize the market? Seize the market is a, a CRM, uh, it's a client management system basically, and it's a lead management system too. What do you think about the word toolbox? What is a toolbox? A toolbox is a box full of tools that you use to build something great. At Real Estate Rockstars, we've created our own free toolbox. So everybody that comes on the show as a guest brings a tool with them and we plow them all into this toolbox and we give it away for our viewing audience to basically use as they wish. Everything we put in there is an actionable item that can be downloaded, can be printed, can be used immediately. And we got things like scripts and dialogues, checklists for teams, checklists to keep agents accountable, referral forms that are filled out at settlement to get referrals by your buyers and sellers. Everything you can think of that you could use on a regular basis about real estate is included in this toolbox and it's helping agents worldwide sell more houses and make their jobs a lot easier and processes much more efficient. And the thing is, it's absolutely free. All you got to do is go to hybendigital.com backslash toolbox or text the word toolbox to 444-999. That's toolbox 444-999. Do it now. All right. So it's like a mission thing, Boomtown, whatever, right? Yep. All in one. It's the only one that I found that's got everything I really need in one, one system, including my dialer. So that's a nice thing. Wow. And so, yeah, it's a, it's a good little system. Um, Brivity is another one that is starting to become with all that stuff, just in case anybody wants another one um, to think about. But We've got everything in there. And so that means, you know, like my marketing plan for the entire year, you know, some people call that a 33 touch or 36 touch is what some people are saying you need to do now. We've got all those touches planned out. And not only are they planned out in seize the market and really run in seize the market, they also are planned out in our Google drive. Our Google drive is probably one of the best things that people, um, contact me for it's got every single process every single procedure and every email we send for anything in there and it's all you know it's so the it's, idea is to touch and anybody you put in there let's say on average three times a month 
and the, the, the question that comes up a lot is, you know, who's qualified to put in there that you're going to want to spend, you know, time and money. And I'm not talking a lot, right? A couple of bucks each person, but it could add up if you get a couple thousand people. How do you know who's qualified to put in there that you want to touch them 36 times a year or 33 times a year? Yeah, those are my past clients or people that we know would potentially refer us business. So my sphere, right? And that's who goes on a marketing and family. That's it. Right. Okay. Yeah. And then everybody else in our database is going to go on some type of lead plan. And we have tons that we've, you know, started to use. What does and that mean? Some type of lead plan. Yep. So we've got a bunch of different ones, right? So if, if I go out and I, we have a networking event that we do every single month as a team, if I meet people from that networking event, they come back and they go on my eight by eight is what I call it. So eight touches in eight weeks. And we are going to systematically tell them what we do, but also send them some brownies and a card that says it was really sweet meeting them and things of that nature. And then once we are finished with something like that, we're going to roll them into a different plan and try to figure out which one. Do they go on a 33 touch? Do they go back into like cold leads? Have they gotten in touch with me at all? What if you've sent them eight things in eight weeks or texted them or called them, any, any and all of those, and no response? They're going to go into a different plan, which, which I would consider kind of a cold or spending money on them. So that's kind of like the boot. It's like a boot camp for the army and the Marines, right? You put them in this boot camp for eight weeks where you're bombarding them with communication. And if they come out of that boot camp and you've had a conversation with them or you've met them, then they get into the army and the Marines. But if they come out of that boot camp and you know what, they haven't even responded, you just essentially kick them to the curb, right? Yeah, we're always going to drip to them. So like we've got a newsletter that we do and we, we have um, different emails that we send out for like our networking event and things of that nature. So we're going to kind of always keep in touch. Nobody gets deleted. Um, but we kick them to the curb in that we're not spending more money on them. We're going to drip to them systematically via the phone, text, or email. I think agents and spend way too much time. You know, I, I talked to David Tall who owns uh, Agentology uh, yesterday and uh, he came on the show and he basically says he puts the agents into a five-day vortex, uh, so to speak, of 10 contacts in five days. And if they spin out of that and they don't call back, there's no communication, they kind of go into this long tail of really crappy, you know, you don't really follow up. You're like, eh, you know. Yeah. But if they, if they pop out of that tornado of five days – then they run with them and they're con you know, he's constantly encouraging agents to, to stay in that five day tornado and, and work leads harder in that five day tornado. than you would following up leads from 30, 60, 90 days ago. It just uh, isn't worth your money and or time necessarily to do that. If you could have leads that are in that five day vortex. And in your case, it's a two month vortex. Um, but if, if once they're out of that vortex, their, their value has diminished greatly. Let's just say if they haven't called back. Yeah. And if it's a lead, if it's an internet lead, you know, we have, so we have plans for everything. So like if it's an internet lead, it's going to go into our 10 days of pain, which is like a five day vortex, but 10 of them. And we're going to harass them for 10 days. Um, that's like Ben Kinney style. So we adopted that. And so we will do that. But then they do, they just go into our, hey, you're going to get our newsletter and you're going to get these emails that check in for, you know, another year or so. And then, so this is actually important. So in my process is at, at the end of every single thing. So say it's a year long plan, right? At the very end, it says, hey, plan's finished, time to reclassify. And I can go back in and I can look and see, have they done anything? Have they come in here? We might then just dead them and, you know, and they can come back to my website and search my website and look at homes anytime they want. Um, but really, we're not going to continue to drip on them too long. Or we could just put them back on and just continue to drip. So we're going to reclassify. Reclassify. I love it. Yep. I love it. I love it. Um, all right. So let's uh, wrap this up, uh, Lindsay, with our flagship question. Is that is this? If I were to take you and, um, you know, if I were to take you, and put you on an island. Now, there's, this is an island that has commerce on it. There's people buying and selling real estate, money being trans, you know, whatever you want to call it. Money is being used back and forth. I'm lost for words. Um, and uh, I put you on this island, and I put nine other agents on the same island, and I have you guys go at it. 
you each have a thousand dollars you each have a laptop computer and a cell phone but no one knows no one nobody knows anybody and um uh i give you say six months and whoever sells the most houses in six months uh i'm going to give 10 million dollars to how are you going to beat out these other nine agents and uh, win this game I'm going to recruit the heck out of every person that's got talent anywhere near on that island, and I'm going to put them to work for me, with me. And then I'll build systems and processes around that. So it wouldn't just be me. You're going to go straight to recruiting and building a team and bypass, you know, uh, trying to sell houses. You're going to sell it indirectly through leverage. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's, yeah, that's what I'm all about. <laughs> and I guess that's how you grew so fast, right? You yeah. Know, and, and it's all about building a business for me, right? It's all about the business part of the business aspect. I look at the whole thing as a business. So yeah, you're yeah. not a real estate agent. You're a businesswoman. I am. I am. Very good. And a savvy one at that. Thank you. <laughs> well, listen, Lindsay, this has been awesome. I'm going to, um, Put all of Lindsay's information on hybendigital.com backslash Lindsay, L-I-N-Z-E-E. -E. Lindsay, everyone that comes on the show brings a item of utility, a, a PDF file, something that the agents can print out and use on a daily basis. We take that and we put it in our agent success toolbox that anybody can get by going to hybendigital.com backslash toolbox or texting the word toolbox to 444 nine 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 Lindsay, what are you going to offer the rock star nation today that we will uh give to them uh from your team that you use yeah. one of my very favorite things it's called a communication journal we put our sellers one up and it basically walks them through the entire process everything they need to know about what you do as a team um i think people will like it that's awesome. I'm going to put that on uh, in her show notes as well as all our information. You have a referral you want to send out to Westchester, Pennsylvania or surrounding areas. It's probably about 45 minutes outside of Philadelphia. Um, uh, you can reach out to Lindsay and, uh, and stay in touch. Let her know what you thought. Lindsay, thanks so much for coming on Real Estate Rockstars. Yes, thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for watching Real Estate Rockstars. Please give us a review wherever you're watching or wherever you're listening. We eat feedback for breakfast. And I don't care whether you give me a one-star review or a five-star review. I just want the review. I want to know what we're doing right and what we're doing wrong. Would love to improve things. Hey, and listen, please subscribe. The more subscribers we get and the more reviews we get, the better guests we'll get for you in the future. Feel free to reach out to me anywhere on social media. Just type in my name. I'm everywhere. And I look forward to meeting you in the digital world. Have a great day. And thanks again for listening to Real Estate Rockstars.